Hello everybody, I'm Full Metal Digimon and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm showing you my Alterune, Altergeist, Runic test deck. Um, this is one version that I was uh, running through. So uh, going off of what we saw last time, we have the same um, Runic spells, the droplets, all of these are the same. Uh, the only package that we changed is uh, I added this in because it seems to help sometimes. And I threw in the Altergeist package. So, um, Marionette on Normal Summon can grab any of the traps. So we threw one of each in. Uh, you can grab this for just a Normal Summon. Now you have a Negate. Um, you can, if you grab this, you can, um, you know, if you use this to grab this, you can revive any of these. Um, this smaller package didn't seem to work very well at all. Um, something else I had run was something more similar to um, we had two of these we threw in two of these we had one of these and we had two of these um, but yeah something like this uh, it actually worked a little better um, believe it or not um, all you have to do is you have to actually skip a battle phase um, for the battle phase restriction to wear off on these so you just skip one battle phase, uh, you pass it to them, you rely on your Altergeist cards for one turn, and then it's your turn again, then you can hopefully Link Climb into your um, either Memory Gant or Access Code. Um, something you can do is use one of your Runics in the extra Monster Zone, plus your other two, uh, any two Altergeists, and you can go into Selene, and Selene with all the spell cards in this deck will 100% be able to summon any of these. Um, she can summon Hextia from the graveyard. She can summon um, this whole deck, uh, an extra one from your hand if you happen to brick on them. Um, this deck list isn't as great as I was hoping it would be. It had some really good plays and it had some really bad duels. Um, so I have a, a few replays to show you to showcase it, but we do have some other ideas in mind. So keep in tune the next couple of days as I explore the different engines that can be run in Runic. All right, let's get started. All right, so for this first replay, we open up the Meloseek and a bunch of Runic cards, including the Field Spell, which is amazing. We are going second against Mathmech, and he's gonna go ahead into a Link Disciple combo, summoning the Parallel X Seed underneath the Link Monster, summoning another one from the deck, He's going to go ahead and link that into a devotee, which will trigger, triggering the Link Disciple to tribute and draw, and then tribute the devotee to summon two tokens. So he's linking one of the tokens and his Link Monster off into a Cyber's Wicked, and the other token into a Bay Lynx, triggering the Wicked to search for a Cyber's Tuner, and the Bay Lynx will search for a Sanctuary. So he searches for the Nabla. Go ahead and link these two off into a Union Carrier. Uh, enjoy this combo while it lasts, buddy. It is not lasting much longer. Goes into the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword, which locks us out of the extra deck. Here he's going to go ahead, uh, do some more plays, end up in the Alan Burton. Uh, Alan Burton can search a Math Mech from your deck to your hand. And he's searching for the Circular, which is the new card. He's going to Discard, summon, tribute the Union Carrier to summon a level 4 from the graveyard. And then Circular is going to grab the Super, Factori Super Factorio, which is going to um, put up a negate on my turn. So he's had a pretty stocked turn. We're going to go ahead and open the Meloseek. Now one thing about playing the Altergeist in this decklist is a Meloseek will make your opponent panic. Um, if you do open it on the first turn, it can be quite good since we have not activated any runic spells and can go into our battle phase, which is what we are attempting to do now as he activates all these effects. Go ahead and try to swing him with the Meloseek, making him activate the Super Factorio, which will summon three level fours and exceeds all three of them together into the Laplacian. Now the Laplacian has multiple effects. <clears throat> which we are going to freezing curses and try to negate but he does have the imperm in that column which is going to negate so he 
gets rid of one from our hand, one from the field. Milliseek is going to activate, getting negated. We're going to Runic Fountain and misplay by playing Destruction in the Imperm column. Beautiful. We're going to go ahead and draw three anyway. Drawing into more uh, cards, we have the... Uh, I believe it's the Monster Pop and the Spell Pop. So he's going to go ahead and link in an access code talker. Now, I still don't understand what exactly happened as to why um, this flashing fire did not take the access code out. Uh, I'll have to look into that a little more. I thought that was going to work. Get rid of the floodgate and be able to use my last card to go into a hug to protect myself, but I wasn't able to. Um, but here we are going to still be able to go into our extra deck finally, summoning a hug -in, preventing the access code from destroying. You have to have your toggle on to be able to work around the access code, but he has so much material in the graveyard. He's going to go ahead, pop everything, summon, summon, Xyz, and I believe that is all we have. He's just going to keep comboing off a little bit, because of course, and he's swinging for game. So, not a great opening, but uh, takes more than one duel to figure out if something works or not. So we'll go ahead and jump right into another one. Okay, second duel here. We open a full array of runic cards, one of each, which is the best you want to see. Going up against Sword Soul. He's going to start off with the Long Wand. Summon, go right and do the bear on the floor for the rank or uh, synchro 10. Inflicting 1200 and he's going to pass it over on just the Omni Negate. So we're going to start off and we are going to Runic Tip. Which gets the Negate which we can freeze in curses. Either way, uh, if he had let that gone through, we would have activated Flashing Fire to force him to Negate anyway. Uh, we go ahead and play our Fountain that we searched. Activate the flashing fire to destroy, and we are going to draw three cards. One, two, three. You want to try to get as many in the graveyard as you can. You can discard with the hug in or um, through any other effect, or just use them beforehand and not activate the fountain. But if you can get three, you want three. Here we search for and activate a lore, which will let us banish an extra card every time a quick play card is activated. And it goes to him. He is going to Cosmic Cyclone, our field spell, which Noonan can banish to negate and destroy. As long as it targets a Runic card or a face down card we, we control. He's going to go into the Vashuda, and I know what he's going to do with the Vashuda, and Noonan is not once per turn. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to Noonan out, use one of our Runic cards to draw three. And he is going to go ahead and link off into the Monk of the Ten Yi. So now he's going to try to use Vashuda to bounce, so we chain instead our Flashing Fire to destroy so he can't activate. Here you got a bit more going on. Allure's uh, continuing to banish cards. He Avarices to draw and return some monsters. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and use the Spelling to discard a card from his hand. And he's going to DD Crow one of our spells out of the graveyard. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of uh, interactions that happen with this deck. Uh, in the end phase, we're going to go ahead and tip for the destruction for the back row. Allure will banish a card off the top, and we gain a thousand from Moonin. So at the height of the turn, we draw a card. It's the main phase. We're going to just run out the destruction, target the back row, go ahead and destroy it. Allure is going to banish a card, and the field spell will let us draw three. Beautiful. We're going to play the other fountain and slumber, which will let us draw even more. Uh, here I tried to do something fancy and completely messed up, thinking that I would be able to activate one of these two cards in my hand, though I've already activated one of each of them. So my entire play was moot. But a little thing is when um, Instant Fusion wears off, Huggin will just return back to the extra deck. Here he's going to summon the blue Tenyi, go into the Monk, and we're going to Slumber 
to bring out the Moonin once again to protect Friends of the Shuda. And then we have Lore and Fountain to draw two. When you draw, it's not so good. Uh, we already have a protocol face down. <clears throat> the protocol is live, so don't think that it's useless. Um, protocol in the field and a Conqueror in the hand would be a um, attack negate and a monster negate as well. So he's going to go ahead and try to activate. We're going to um, negate and destroy. Summon the Moonin in the battle phase. Allure is going to banish a card. He's going to get a token. And we're going to gain a thousand life points. <clears throat> and back to our turn. We tip again. We've used this so many times in school. Uh, we, draw, we search for the flashing fire to destroy the monk. Allure is going to banish a card. We go for the monk. Get rid of them. We're going to Allure. Field spell to draw. We've got three in there, so we're going to draw three. He's going to do some stuff and summon a monster and pop a card, and that's fine. We draw into everything we needed for the Altar Guys package. So we go ahead, we set our Manifestation, we set our MFL, we send the Protocol to summon the Conquery. We set our other protocol and go into a Hexia. And we're going to go ahead and pass it over after trying to enter the battle phase. Very important to try. So in the draw phase, we're going to end up health under the Hextia, which will give us a spell and trap card negate. We got Vashuda trying to bounce. We can protocol negate that. <clears throat> and toggle on at the resolution of this chain. We're going to activate Manifestation to summon the Marionetter underneath the Hextia to have the negate live again. And here, um, our opponent has given up hope and realized his defeat. Um, so here's the cool thing. As long as you don't use any runic cards during your opponent's turn, and you can use the Ultra Geist for just one turn, you can get uh, a setup similar to this, and we can attack. We can go ahead and swing and swing. And that's lethal. We attacked with runic. Amazing. On to the next duel. Alright, this next duel, we've opened tip again, get in the fountain, play the fountain, we have a wonderful spread of cards, and the Telf's probably one of the better cards of the Altergeist, believe it or not, just for the free body to block, um, and when you're running it with Silk, you can return it back to your hand after linking with the Silk and the Emotel. Um We're going to go ahead, we draw into the Allure, we summon a Melisique, setting our Emmet Health and Protocol. So Protocol will be able to negate a monster effect, which is, this is perfect, Aliber. Uh, instant negate, not even gonna think twice about it. This is actually after I took Multifaker out of the deck, which was a huge uh, problem. I, I thought the package was too big and I tried to trim it down and it actually made it worse. So he's gonna go ahead and call by the grave our Meliseek and branded in red for the masquerade <clears throat> so we do not get our search and he has the masquerade and allure is going to activate twice since he activated two quick play spells and we're going to take 1200 damage <laughs> luckily we do have the moon in to uh, counteract the burn damage that he's doing but we are going to flashing fire in the battle phase and he's had enough insta surrender <laughs> Now this one was pretty fun. Uh, I actually checked out this guy's stream afterwards. Uh, he's a Japanese player and a little upset with uh, what we were playing. So we open pretty good. We have the moon in the fountain. We have a protocol and a Melisique or a manifestation and a Melisique face down to soak up a hit. We have a flashing fire in hand, which is live, and we forgot to set the droplet, but that is totally okay. So he goes and he finds himself an Amazonist Swordswoman, which will reflect battle damage that it's supposed to take. Um, so he's playing the stall deck, so I know instantly, don't worry about it, I just pass the turn, gain some more life points, we're up to 11,000 already. And he goes into the Panker Tops, okay? Now we know he has a Solemn Judgment face down since we watched him search it, so we Flashing Fire, he negates. Now an interesting thing, I'll pause here for just a second I think, 
Yeah. So a small thing with flashing fire is it says you can only activate runic flashing fire. Uh, you can only activate one per turn. So Solemn Judgment actually says you negate the activation. So if you negate the activation and not the effect, you will, in fact, be able to activate the second one. So here he tries to Tanker Tops. We tribute to negate and we were going to get him. So he surrendered. Didn't want to do it. So for this final duel here, we open pretty good. Uh, slumber, Destruction, Dispelling not too bad we're gonna slumber since we have two summon the hug in we should have discarded this the second slumber but um we kind of misplayed here still learning the, the runic part of the decks and uh we're gonna go ahead and pass with these in our hand and the hug in and then we are going up against pendulums so he's gonna pendulum call for the shanky magician and the uh dragon caller i want to say or dragon pit i don't remember which one <clears throat> he's gonna go ahead and pop and go into the sky iris we're gonna pop the sky iris so he uh isn't protected in the back row anymore and be able to draw three since we were not going to be able to pop his scales so he's gonna pendulum for one and swing him for 2500 now janky is actually not too bad against our deck because it can once per turn quick effect target a light monster and negate its effects so that's going to negate all of our extra deck monsters we're going to go ahead and slumber summoning moon in from the extra deck and we're going to activate since we can't activate destruction to draw one we draw the conquery which isn't the worst so we play the altgeist marionetter set the protocol we go ahead and pass we have an effect negate we have the back row pop and draw one we have the droplets on the field so we go ahead we can conquer for the attack negate and then we're going to negate his odd eyes dissolver since it can let him go into a fusion summon um, while being in his back row there so now we're able to pop his back row since it's been two row two turns drawing one into a dispelling gaining a thousand life points trying to build back up <laughs> Here we draw the flashing fire. We're going to go ahead and try to pop the Zanki. He's going to negate our marionetter, which does not matter to me at all. Uh, we'll go ahead and fountain for one. We're just trying to get some resources going, maybe draw into one more Altergeist card that would make all the difference. So here I'm just showing off. Uh, once per turn, you can fusion summon a dragon fusion. Well, I negated it, and he had the Odd Eyes fusion. So he's going to go into the Vortex. The Vortex is going to activate to bounce. And here I thought that Protocol would not be able to be negated. But it actually has to already be up on the field. Or um, it has to resolve. So if I had chained a Protocol to his negate, it would have worked. <clears throat> Though the way I did it, it did not. So here we're going to gain another 1,000. We lose all our Altergeists. We smithing storm, chain golden droplets. We're trying to bait out a negate here, though we don't get one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fountain for two. We're looking for a flashing fire here. We don't get one. We do draw into a marionetter, which we're going to play. And once again, the call by the great. They just hate my ultra guys today. So he can negate my marionetter from the grave. I thought here tributing... Um, would get around it but he does not tribute for cost so it did not get around the negation so we're gonna have to just pass with what we have here so he has the odd eye synchron and the dissolver go into bear on the floor and he can pendulum halt here to draw two so i mean we can at least discard one out of his hand we get a uh he had a free pop there so it's either a pop or a search here we get a big chain, we try to draw, he tries to negate, and we say Forbidden Droplets, please stop. But we draw into a Melly Seek, not what we wanted to see. Okay, so he's going Dragon Caller. He's doing some Synchros into the Meteor Burst Dragon. And the Meteor Burst can summon from the back row and go into a rank 7, the Absolute. Here you can attack, you negate which will summon an Odd Eyes from the Graveyard, which will be the Vortex. 
which can then swing in. This does make Vortex miss timing, um, but still look at your field. That's two Omni Negates. Well, one's used up, but an Omni Negate, a pop every turn, and an Attack Negate. And if you send that to the graveyard, another Vortex will come out. So we're going to go ahead, summon the Meliseek, realize we can't go into the battle phase, do what we can, <clears throat> try to gain some life points. He's going to negate and uh, destroy and change the turnover. There's nothing we can do about that. We do have the destruction for some back row, but he's not playing any at all. He's going to try to pop. We're going to go ahead and try to summon the Huggin, I believe, to protect. And here we should have sent the quick play as well. That's my mistake. And then we could have um, prevented, we could have negated the Baron as well. So here we can search off a Meliuseek and we draw and it's another Meliuseek. I should not have played three. <laughs> uh, Meliuseek's not good in this deck necessarily unless you literally open it going second. Um, so yeah, all in all, I guess Altergeist probably wasn't the, the best match for this deck. Um, if you made it this far in the video, I'll give you a free spoiler. Um, in another day or two, we'll be playing some Orcus Runic, which will be very fun. Um, thank you for coming and checking out the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And uh, once again, this has been Full Metal Digimon. And everybody, just have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.